Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about X inactivation. Sometimes we call this lionization, and that's uh, kind of giving credit to the person who discovered most of this, which is Mary Lyon. Uh, but I want to start the whole thing by talking about calico and tortoiseshell cats. Calico cats like this one and tortoiseshell cats like this are almost always female which puzzled scientists for a long time until we finally figured out how that works. And it puzzled Mary Lyon as well. Here she is. She worked at Cambridge. But basically what she found is that when she was working with lab rats, um, some of them would be a white, some would be a gray, and some would be kind of a tortoiseshell between the two. But what she found is that most of those tortoiseshell mice were um, females. And so most of them had two X chromosomes. And she was also working on chromosomes and why some disorders are more prevalent in females than they are in males. And so we know that sex linkage. Uh, but basically what she found is that when you look into the nucleus of a cell, so this is in the nucleus, in every uh, cell of every female, one of the X chromosomes will be active, and so it works perfectly, but the other one is going to be inactive. It's going to fall apart. And so if you're a female, in all of your cells, only one of the X chromosomes is active and the other one is inactive. It's okay, though, because you're fine. Uh, on guy side, same thing. We only have one X chromosome, and so sex chromosomes like this are kind of designed to just work on their own. And when it breaks apart like that, we call that a bar body, or that X chromosome is now inactivated. And so let me kind of talk you through how this works. Well, basically, when you're born, uh, well, before you're born, when you're a zygote, that zygote, if you're a female, will have two X chromosomes. And those X chromosomes will be copied when the cell goes through mitosis. And so we go from having one cell to two, and then to four, and then to eight. And I could keep doing this, but basically when you get a big ball of cells like this, these are called stem cells. They're cells that can become any other cell. But right around this time when you start to get this big blastula, there's basically a flip of the coin that goes on in each of the cells. And so one of the X chromosomes will simply wad up and become inactivated. So this one might wad up, and it's a 50-50 chance which are the ones are going to wad up. So it might be that one, it might be that one. So it's totally random which one's going to wad up in each of these. Uh, now, the one that's left, it's going to be able to express all of the genes that are found on that. And what's interesting is that all the cells that come from this cell likewise are going to have one X chromosome that's inactivated and then one X chromosome that's activated. And so basically this stem cell, once that flip of the coin has occurred, it's for the rest of the life of the cell and all the cells that come from that. And so that tells us why a calico cat is female. Let me talk you through that. So if you're a male cat, you could basically be an orange cat or a black cat. Or you could be a white cat if you're lacking the pigment on the, on the hair. And so let's look at this. So it's found on the X chromosome. If you have the black gene on your X chromosome, since you only have one X chromosome, then you're going to be a black cat. If you have the orange gene on your X chromosome, then you're going to be an orange cat. And it's pretty straightforward because in every cell, there's going to be an X chromosome with that gene. It's making that pigment color. Now let's look at the female side. So if you're a female cat and you have two X chromosomes, if both of them are black gene, then you're going to have a black cat. Now what you should know is that in each of the cells of this cat that produces this black pigment on its skin, it's going to be a different X chromosome that's working in each of those. So that flip of the coin has occurred. Likewise, if we've got you know an orange gene in each of those X chromosomes, same thing. It's going to be orange. But what's weird is if you're heterozygous for it. And so if you're this, if you're a female who is, uh, has one X chromosome with a black gene and one with a orange gene, well, how could this occur? Well, simple. Let's say we match this, a black cat, with an orange cat. Then all of the offspring are going to be like this. And so what is it going to look like? Well, this is not a great animation or a great picture, but basically what you'll have is splotches of black and splotches of orange. And so let's look at this black right here. Basically what happened is at the stem cell stage, the orange gene, basically this orange gene became a bar body. So it became inactivated and all the cells that came from that produced black pigment. I think that's really cool. Likewise, in ones where the black one wadded up, all the cells that come from that is going to produce orange pigment. And so that's X inactivation. It's rare that we see this occurring, and that's just because sex cells are designed to work on their own, the X chromosome. Now two quick questions you should be thinking right away is, number one, what about the white? Why do we get this white coloration? Well, if you remember when I talked about genetics, there's a process called epistasis. And so basically there's going to be a set of genes that determine the color of the pigment that's added to the hair. 
but there's going to be another gene or set of genes that are actually going to tell us is that color added to the hair or not and that's called epistasis and so basically in these uh, cells we're not actually adding the pigment but up here we've got X and uh, X inactivation another question you should be thinking to yourself is at the beginning I said almost all calico cats that you'll ever see are going to be female well how could we ever have a male calico cat it's pretty simple but maybe non intuitive basically what you could get is a XXY male and so how does that occur? Well, during meiosis, you could get non-disjunction of the two X chromosomes. And so basically, you could get one that is of the orange, one that is of the black. And so you could have a, we call this Klinefelter syndrome in humans, but you could have a calico male. But again, it's going to be incredibly rare. So that's X uh, inactivation. It's rare that you could see this in humans. However, I was reading, and there's a disorder in humans where they lack sweat glands. You could imagine that's really, really dangerous because you can't regulate your temperature. And wh what I found is that if you have or are heterozygous for this in some females, they'll actually have patches of their skin where they have sweat glands and patches where they don't. And that's just due to X inactivation. And I hope that's helpful.